today's lesson is all about learning this thing, the fretboard, learning the fretboard. Now, the thing is, if you don't know your fretboard, you are lost on the guitar. If you know your fretboard, you can find the scales, you can find the chords, you can find the arpeggios, you can express yourself. This is crucial to um, you winning at the game of guitar. So I'm going to pull some notes in here and I'm going to talk about one of the first things that you really want to be looking at with the guitar is, first things first, you need to know the names of the strings. And if you don't know the names of the strings, then... There are, there's a video on my channel, no doubt about it. But just to recap, going from north to south, we get E, A, D, G, B, and E. A handy mnemonic you can remember to, uh, that you can use, sorry, to remember that is Eddie It's Dynamite Goodbye Eddie. That should enable you to be able to find the, the string named the E string, the string named the D string, the G string, the B string, whichever string it is that you're looking for, then you can use that mnemonic to help you. But the cool thing is, is that this top, this thickest string that we have here, this E string, the Eddie, and if you notice from that mnemonic, they're called, I went Eddie, Eight Dynamite, Goodbye, Eddie, the thin string is also an eddy string as well. So we've got an eddy at either end. We've got an eddy there and eddy there. That's a useful thing because if you know what uh, uh, the notes are on this thick E string, by default, you know what the notes are on this thin E string here as well. But hopefully I'm going to give you a silly lesson here that will enable you to name the notes on the E string. And that's what today is about. It's about learning your E string first. If you want to learn the guitar neck fast, then what you need to do is you need to have a starting point. It's always easier to go somewhere new from somewhere you already know. Now, that's what we've got to do. We've got to build up this geography of the fretboard so that you can understand it. So because this is the E string, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, I've got this, this is a new resource. Hopefully you can see that there. This is a little diagram of a fretboard, so I'm going to be putting stuff on that there, and hopefully be able to just follow along using that. First thing I'm going to put on this is uh, the two notes that live next door to each other. Now, you need to know this. The musical alphabet is what gives us the labels for these notes, and the musical alphabet goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G. When we reach G, we go back to A again. And the thing is that you need to know is that E and F and B and C are always a fret uh, next to each other. They're always next to each other on the fretboard. So by virtue of this whiteboard marker, I'm going to plump this E on here. I'm going to, I'm going to draw that in there. There's an E. That's our E string. That's Eddie, right? And remember, I said here that this is exactly the same as well. So like I said, by default, knowing that, you will know this too. Here's E, and then that means that F is next door to it there. And that E and F are always next door to each other. It never changes, it never shifts, it never goes up another fret. They are, a, that's a static pattern. It's a fixed pattern, a fixed configuration, if you will. Now, the, the thing of this is that E and F are always next door to each other, the same thing applies to B and C. Do you know what? I'm just going to utilize this B string here because it's just there and I might as well do. B and C are always next door to each other as well. So those are, are always um, uh, uh, one fret up. The C is always one fret up from a B and the F is always one fret up from an E. Right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get, get, give you a little silly story to help you to remember something here. The dots on your guitar are there for a reason. They are there as landmarks. And if you remember I said it's always easy to go somewhere new from somewhere you already know, then this is going to make absolute sense. If you look at this dot at the third fret, that is a three there, trust me. Um, this note here, well, if you look here, we come up the next note in this sequence of A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So I'm going to write that down there. A, B, C, D, E, F, 
and G. Right, so we've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And if you just look at that sequence, you can see that E, F, well, what comes after E, F? We get a G. So this note here is worth noting that that G there is uh, on the third fret. That G there is on the third fret. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Um, and that continues that sequence there. Now, what happens is when we get to the end of the musical alphabet, it goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G. It goes back to an A again. And the whole alphabet sequence starts again. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Hopefully that's you can see that there. Right, OK. So once we've hit that G then, what we have to do is go back to the A. And you can see that the A lands there on the fifth fret, where that second dot is on your fretboard. And then the next note after A is going to be B. Now, that B lands beautifully here. Uh, you can see that on the seventh fret on another dot. So what we could do is we could look at that configuration there. And this is what I call the gift of the gap. Now, if you've ever heard that saying before, if you look at that E string there, and you, you think to yourself, well, you already know about E and F and B and C being next door neighbours, so one fret apart or a half step, uh, then everything else is really just a step apart or a turn. Here, you can see these line up. So there's a few things that, that make you uh, able to visualise this a lot uh, simpler then, you know, you have to hallucinate these new label names onto the frets. There's nothing, there's nothing on there. There's no, nothing, there's no letters on there. You know, you can get those little sticker kits, but there's no letters on there to help us. And I, and I wouldn't actually recommend those sticker kits because what they do is they kind of make you reliant, they're a crutch. You know, what you need to be able to do is you're able to visualise and put your finger on and know for sure that that note at the third fret on the E string is a G. Now, on my channel, all these, these silly mnemonics and all these different lessons that are just tools to get you started, eventually you will discard them and you will just know the information intrinsically. You will know it and you will just use it. It becomes as easy as knowing uh, um, how, your alphabet. It would be as easy as all that sort of stuff. So here at the third fifth and seventh, you can see that what ends up happening here is we get the gift of the gab. Now, as you might know, someone who has the gift of the gab is the ability to speak. Um, so, but here, what you want to do is you want to be able to speak on your instrument. You want to be able to talk co uh, coherently. And you, the only way you can do that is by knowing where your notes are so that you can be really explicit in your note choices. So you can go for the jugular with what it is that you are trying to say. So the gift of the gab is here. Now the beautiful thing is that the B is there and we know that B and C are neighbors. And you can see we get that relationship there. Look at that. Between B and C, we get that semitone or half step. Now, the cool thing is, if you watched any of my other videos, you will also know that the zero fret is the same as the 12th fret. And we can identify the 12th fret very easily by virtue of the fact it generally has double dots. It has two dots on the guitar here. It just has those two there. And that tells us that we have gone back to the beginning. Yeah, hang on, let me just check that off there. We've gone back to the beginning, we've drawn that on there. So we get an E there. So that is an E, and this is an E, right? Okay, so that's cool. Well, if we go up E, F, G, A, B, we can see that that C is there, because it's a semitone apart then, and all the other notes, apart from E and F and B and C, are a step, which is two frets, or a tone, which is two frets. Tone is in the English uh, um, a word for it, and a step is the US term for it. If we did that, then we could see that C, and then we're going to have D here. And that completes the musical alphabet sequence. So you can see it goes E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. We've gone all the way through that uh, sequence there. That helps you to be able to see all the way down the length of that string. 
Now that's super important uh, as this uh, as being your first foray into learning the fretboard because this is going to be where you're going to find the root notes for all your power chords. If you're learning the F shape or bar chords, this is going to be where you find the root notes for your bar chords. Notice I'm not getting into what's in the gaps. Yeah, enough to say that that's, those are the sharps and the flats. And those are a, a different story, but we don't really want to get into that right now because we don't want to have, uh, overload you with too much information. That's a subject for another video. Um, so you can see we've got E and F and B and C. They're next to each other. If you wanted to have a mnemonic, you might say to yourself, well, how do you like your breakfast? I like my eggs fried and my bacon crispy. Yeah, now that's another silly mnemonic just to help uh, help you uh, do this. Uh, and um, so you can see how that all works there. And then we've got the gift of the gab. We have that lonely D there, and that then takes us to the E here. Now, um, I'm going to do another uh, lesson as well on counting the musical alphabet backwards. But, you know, needless to say, uh, the way that I have learned it is that I just remember G, F, E, D, C, B, A. It's one of those things that it's going to be really, really useful for you to learn. But we're going to talk about... Uh, uh, in another video uh, about this economy of movement of being able to see these things going up and down. Okay, so three, five, seven. We've got that nine there, and then we've got that 12 there. Um, I have some notes down here, and this is a useful way for you to plot that out. Now, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to put uh, a, a PDF in the description for this video, and I'm going to, it's going to be a blank one. Because what I want you to do is I want you to walk through this video, watch this video again, yes, watch this video again, and, and then what we're going to do is you're going to get a pencil, not a pen, because a pencil you can rub the mistakes out with, get a pencil and draw these in, yeah? Have your guitar there, don't necessarily have your guitar in your hand, and you're going to draw these in, and then that will help you to uh, remember how this works, because it's it's about the power of intent. Now, if you watch this video and you know you go, all right, I think I've got that, Ricky. You might not do. You know, there's a 50 percent chance that you're going to actually get this. But you know, really, what helps is uh, intent is a beautiful thing. If you say you are going to do something then uh, to somebody else, then there is more of a chance of you doing it. If you think it, it's wishy-washy, you can let it go. However, if you write things down, it makes them solid, it makes them tangible. And when you do that, then this is going to happen. So please download the PDF that I will put in the description for this video, and you can do this. Now, so let me take this here and let me just quickly apply it to the guitar itself. So I'll just bang that down there. So I said that we had the E string. So there we have got that E string and we're just remembering that E and F are here. So if I wanted to play an F chord, and this is this is this could be done. Some people might poo-poo it and say, oh, all right, you know, you're not playing the full F, but Power chords are abbreviations for full chords. This is, that's the easiest way to kind of understand it. You get the gist of what is being said. And if you're singing uh, and you want to accompany yourself, it helps you to pitch. Now, so the F is there. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my power chord. And that E string is providing me with the root note of that power chord. That's the note that gives the chord its name, the scale its name, the arpeggio. So that F. Is going to give me this F5 power chord. And I'm only using two fingers there. That gives me a power chord. But what if I wanted a G power chord? Then I would go up that system. And remember, here I have the gift of the gap. And this is just on the E string. G, A, B. G, A, B. So look at this. G, A, B. These are all abbreviations. So if somebody says to you, yeah, it's a B7, you know, you might not know the full B7. 
but you can play a power chord B7. It's just for pitching. It's just for getting an idea of, of how you uh, uh, can move forward. There's the B. Because we know B and C are next door to each other because they can crisp it, yeah? Then you can see that B, C. Moving up, we get to the D. And then here at the 12th fret, it, everything begins again. So we've got... We get the E again. It might be a little bit out of tune there. But hopefully that all makes sense. So E, F, G, A, B, C. Up two frets to get to a D. And then the 12th fret, we get the E again. Carrying that information over, because the cool thing is, is if you've learned that on this thick E string, you have learned it on the thin E string also. So you get E, F, G, A, B is going to be on the dots. You're going to have the gift of the gap, G, A, B. We know that bacon is crisp A, B, C. Move up two frets to get a D. And then we get the E at the 12th fret because the whole of the musical alphabet has begun again. Worth noting again, if I go from E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, and I count up, I count up that, and I'm going to use my, uh, my whiteboard again. If I count up there, you can see it goes up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, if you think of a, a creature that lives in the sea with eight legs, an eight-sided shape, that's oct, octopus, octagon. In music, we call that an octave. So the 12th fret there tells you you've hit the octave. And anything after that octave is just a repeat. So here, here we can extend this information even more. So we can go up into the dusty end of the neck now using that same information. Because we've learnt it there, we can, can transfer it over there. But here's the bonus. We can actually transfer it up here because this is E. The same framework exists. This is E. The next door is going to be F because eggs fried. We like those eggs fried. Look at these dots up here. I often say in my videos, and I will do a specific video on this, the third and the 15th are exactly the same note names. Yeah, that's a G and that's a G. All right, so the same rule is going to apply. The dot distribution is exactly the same. We get G, A, B. Now, as you get up uh, uh, further up on the uh, thick E string, the sound of the string doesn't sound great. It always sounds a bit flabby and a bit uh, and a lacking in uh, quality. So go here, G, A, B. So there is the gift of the gap again. That might not be so useful, but if we transfer that idea over here onto the thin E string, then we get the G, A, B. Again, we get the gift of the gap. So this is why I call it the gift of the gap, because that really helps you out in learning some key positions. And these, and when I mean key positions, I mean that literally, you know, because you might play key of G, chord one, there's one, four, five. If you don't know that, if you have not seen my uh, video um, or called The Grid, look for The Grid video, because that's a great video, and that this will help you to understand that and be able to play in any key. It'll also help you to be able to find out where you put your first minor pentatonic box, so that you can solo. There's so many gifts that this has, but the E string is the first place you start when you are learning the fretboard. And generally, as a rule, what happens is the A string is going to be next, the D string is going to be next, and the G string and the B string. Those, that's how it tends to pan out. And, but what happens is most people just learn the E and the A string, and that's about it because that applies to your uh, power chords and your bar chords. Yeah, uh, but, and then it gets fuzzy down here. There are lots more videos on my channel dealing with uh, how to find those other notes as well, page doctor's video, because um, uh, I want you guys to be able to navigate your way around the fretboard so that you can express yourself. That's what the whole point of guitar is about uh, for me, 
It's about putting some uh, something beautiful in the world, even if it's only in your ha- in your head. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, because you don't play the guitar for anybody else. You play the guitar for you. That's who you play guitar for. Anyhow, guys, I hope you have found this uh, this lesson useful. Thank you for all the comments in the super chat. If you've got some value from this lesson, please make sure you hit that subscribe, hit that notification, drop a comment, and please drop a like so that the YouTube algorithm thinks this video is, is of, of any value to anybody else. It will share that. And uh, I would love to see you in the comments again. And, uh, and I try my best to answer all the comments. Thank you very much, guys. And I will see you in the next lesson. More videos coming. But I felt you were due a lesson uh, for my subscribers because I haven't been on for a while. Uh, and I apologize for that. Uh, but no more. It's happening. Right. OK, guys. So I will see you later. Take care. And remember, this thing doesn't play itself. You have to pick it up. Don't let it get dusty in the corner. Pick it up. Go do it now. Okay, bye.